Okay, let's go ahead and get started there, folks. Welcome back to another, um, well, in this particular case, 3 p.m. PST YouTube stream. I'm here at Strange Brew Gym, uh, and we are going to be continuing on with our uh, Unreal Engine tutorials. Now, um, Blackheart will be joining us shortly, or at least I believe he should be. I haven't seen any notifications yet about him joining yet, but that's okay. Um, you know, he might be, um, he might be, uh, delayed, so, uh, matter of fact, let me, um, let me send him a message real quick. Me for Unreal. Or... Oh, yeah. Doing some... We'll see. We'll see about that for right now. Okay. Um, well, in the meantime, what we can do is, well, we can go on to the um, um, Oh, okay. I'm seeing him kind of starting up his stream right at this moment in time, so that's good. Um, so what we can do in the meantime is the fact that, well, um, I tried putting in some windows. And, well, I clearly didn't do a good job of it. <laughs> you know, so, you know... Um, I pretty much did this pretty much last minute earlier today, so, yeah. Um, but then again, you know, uh, I didn't have, I didn't go on to the adding windows and doors video here, so that probably could have helped me out a little bit, but, I mean, oh well. Um, oh, I see Blackheart is in the stage right now, so let me go ahead and invite him to speak. Uh, let him come on in when he's ready, so, or, or are you ready now already? <laughs> okay. Um, you started up your stream just a couple seconds ago, so that's why I was like, do you, do you need some time doing an intro? You know, because... No worries, no worries. No, I mean, are you, are you done with that, or did you need to do that a little bit more? Okay. Okay. Okay, just making sure. Just making sure, my friend. So, yeah, I was just showing everybody how I was, well, uh, you know, how badly I did the uh, the walls and so on and so forth on my, uh, uh, on my Unreal and the fact that I didn't get the windows in <laughs> at all. So it's like, oh boy, okay. Um, at... Yeah. Um, as it is anyway, I was like going, oh, what, I need to, I need to, you know, get a, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, the, one of the things about this is like, you know, um, you know, uh, 
tried adding in a light source in here and or you know I, I did like a directional light which um, Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, if I wanted to have that uh, aligned up with the um, with the you know the hanging light, for example, I need to make sure that I kind of, you, you need to kind of center that a little bit, you know, so that you can kind of show. Like, you know, you can see the, if it's, if it's kind of centered, you know, um, you know, correctly where the, like the ceiling light is located at, and then, you know, it, it makes sense. If it's, if it's slightly, you know, off center from it, then it doesn't really make that much sense as to like, you know, now you're casting a light of the hanging ceiling lamp even though there shouldn't be a source over there <laughs> so oh, i moved the wrong thing there so yeah it was like you know but um what i need to do is kind of work on opening up the windows and and the light that i put in so uh, I take it that you went to that one video adding windows and doors mm-hmm okay so you were able to kind of copy exactly what they had prior or you know add it Mm-hmm. Right. Well, I mean, there's, there's, you know, if, if you need to, you can always do the, um, um, duplicate, you know, so. So, hmm. how did it automatically get, shit, how did it automatically remove, oh, it's brush type subtractive, okay, okay, so, how do I get that in here? I'm not seeing anything here for that. Unless I have to actually make like another like box type to have it subtractive to be um and then place the window in there at the same time. Well, I mean, what I'm what I'm saying is, is that you know, I I put in the um, I put in a glass window, you know, from the um, you know from the, con the content browser, you know, um, there was there's a SS 
you know, glass window in there, and I'm like going, oh, okay, I can just put that in, and, you know, uh, so the, so the frame would be, uh, frame would allow for the subtractive material. Well, my my point is, is that you know I'm looking at this window, or I'm I'm looking at their example here, and they did brush settings, brush type subtractive, and you know when they when they moved the the wall piece, you know what they did was they basically did a duplicate of the of you know of a a subsection of the wall. They had like walls that were kind of divided into separate sub walls right they had three walls kind of uh separated out you know when they when they clicked on one it showed only like a, a small portion of the overwall and that's about it right they were just trying to get you know a single door into that into that uh structure right um so what they did was they duplicated that that wall piece moved it a lot out a little bit uh, you know, shrink the size of it to kind of match what a door might look like. And then they s selected the brush type of subtractive in there, which allowed for it to, when they moved it back into the previous wall, it removed that portion like automatically. And I'm looking at that, I'm going, okay, how am I supposed to do that? You know, with, you know, can I not do that with the um, glass window? It doesn't seem that way. So, so it makes me feel, think that maybe they're either, you know, the glass window is just glass. It allows for light to kind of come on in, but it doesn't necessarily delete the the wall portion of uh of it so yeah which i mean makes which yeah and but at the same time if you know that that seems a little odd to me like you know um hmm. i don't know I, it feels like you know i i should be able to kind of subtract the um you know st still kind of allow for the subtractive on the glass window uh in my particular opinion but I mean, let me let me move a frame in here and see if I can do. No, I have I I don't have it up yet. Hold on. Um you're not showing anything right now. Or wait. Okay, there it goes. There it goes. Okay. It didn't automatically play for you for me for some reason. So 
All right, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, but you should, but you sh sh but from according to the example that they showed in in the video, um, you know, like uh, here, let me, it, you know, the, the the link on the quick start. There's a need help punching out the holes from for windows and doors. Check out our video on adding windows and doors. It's like the tip right below that portion. So if you if you look at that video real quick and you go to um, you get to let me go ahead and put, you know, uh, around a minute six. OK, you'll notice that or actually hold on. Um, so at 36 seconds, okay, they, they have like a duplicate wall, okay, that they pull out, you know, from, they, they make a, a copy of the wall in question in that video, okay, um, and then they scale it down after that. So that, you know, you can kind of see that the size, you know, gets reduced down and, you know, to kind of match a door, you know, in size per se, right? Obviously, there's probably going to be needing to have some adjust adjustments on that. But you see around like a minute 10 or so. Or let's see. Yeah, like around a minute 10, the brush type, they, they changed the brush settings on the brush type from additive to subtractive, and then they just moved it right back into the wall, and it automatically removes the contents of that wall in the same size of that, of that particular box. So... Let me let me see let me see if I can kind of do the exact same thing here. So basic cube. Let me grab drag a cube in. Um, let's see. Let's do four four and then um, nope nope nope. Uh, Point five. Let's reduce this down to say two and two. Okay, let me let me reduce it down by a little bit more. So one point five. Actually, let me do like one. And this one I'll do 1.5. And then I will rotate this 90 degrees. Let's go ahead and reduce this down by a little bit more. Let's say 0.2. There we go. Now, um, Seen brush parameters, but where? Hmm. 
Let me move it closer to the to the wall there, but Yeah, I mean, uh from from what I can see for it's it's 4.7 tutorial. Um so so we're still at, uh we're at 4.27. So so Well, I mean, yeah, but we're we're dealing with, you know, a fairly old um Box brush. The type is the type of it is called brush. So it might be not necessarily box itself, but maybe there's a different type of box out there. Um box where is it? Geometry. Ah, okay. So, so I can go ahead and delete this cube here. Don't need that one. Uh, make a box brush. Okay, so add that one in. And then, um, so we want that to be subtractive scale. Rotate that by 90 degrees, and yeah, there, there it is. So just kind of dragging it around will just kind of wipe out, you know, uh, additional details. But interesting, interesting. So when I'm when I'm kind of moving it around the, um. It's not deleting the the basic boxes either. So the 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 cube that we used to make you know that I used to make the 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 world or the the um, you know they use box brushes. So they they use the they use the geometry box box brush to to kind of create the uh, the method of like generating the walls and subtracting from said walls. So uh, which which is interesting because um, the floor itself is that not I mean I'm I'm using the It's also a box brush, right? Yeah, it is. That's why. Okay, because I'm I'm moving the 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 one box brush around, and I can see it removing the floor, you know, in this particular case, you know, making holes in it. Um. So. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. So. Um. So I guess if you want something that is um, that you don't necessarily need to have uh, anything cut out of it or something like that, then you'd want to use like the basics. But if you want to do something a little bit more in terms of um, 
like removing parts of the wall and stuff like that, then you'd want to use the geometry box to to kind of work on that a little bit more. So, okay. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Okay. Well, um, from my, uh, you know, concerning this particular experiment, I think I'm, I'm pretty much going to go I don't really want to mess with the um, the objects any more on this than I absolutely have to. I've already kind of spent enough time that I really want to on this for the most part. So, um, obviously, you know, my, my particular room looks absolutely terrible and I would not use this at all to even consider an actual room. I'd probably want to, like, you know, uh, tear it all down and start right back over again, personally. Um, but I mean, that's not the purpose of our learning right at this moment in time. We, we don't necessarily care about, um, you know, how something looks for our quick start. <laughs> so, uh, so how about we go move on to the editing placed actors? Or do you want to do you want to do something else in particular or okay I mean if there's something that something else that you want to cover then let me know I don't want to step over you in this as well you okay okay all right we'll move on then so editing placed actors with several different actors placed inside our level, the next step involves editing actor properties, basics, actors, detailed panel that can change the look or the way the actor functions in the level, giving us a more customized uh, looking level. We will start with editing the properties of our directional light actor, then shift our focus on applying materials to some of the static mesh actors that you've placed on in your level. So once you have finished this step, you will have seen where to access and modify the properties of actors so that you can begin editing and experimenting with different settings inside your own levels. So select a directional light actor by left clicking on it in the viewport. So uh, I need to find it again. I've put a lot of actors in here. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Uh, in the details panel under the light category, Enable atmospheric sunlight. So, um, wait, under under light, under light category. Um, I don't see it. Maybe it's under advanced. Do you see it yet? It's supposedly under indirect lighting intensity. Which, right for this one, indirect lighting is vol volumetric, so that does not match with their tutorials right at this moment in time. So this is this is already a fantastic tutorial and is absolutely, you know, <laughs> following <laughs> what they've done. Uh, okay. Um, atmospheric light uh, or atmos atmosphere sunlight. So... I don't see it at all. <sighs> I 
Okay, I found it. It's they put it under atmosphere and cloud. It's no longer under lighting. Um, so there's a category down further in the um, in the details under retracing. It's like right near the right near the bottom. It's like maybe six or seven above called atmosphere and cloud. Right below ray tracing above performance. So unfortunately it's not in any alphabetical order. So that doesn't really help, but Do you know what I mean? Yeah, let me let me look at your stream. Okay, you you are you are clicked on the um, the directional light, right? Okay, so under directional light, uh, scroll down, uh, and because it's not in lighting, there's atmosphere and, okay. Yep. I think you were on the wrong light source, so that's why you weren't seeing it. Okay, um, so there's that. Um, I wonder if there's a way for us to hold on. Uh, remember where I where we left off because I want to see if there's a way to add a like. Um, is there a way where we can send feedback on the page? It doesn't look like it. But this is 4.27, though. That's the point. It's like, um, let me see. Maybe under issues? No. Mm, okay. I mean, I could pro we could probably try to send them something maybe later, but it doesn't feel like there's any, like, direct, like, um, you know, one of the nice things about, uh, the, uh, that I appreciate about my PEGA certification studies is that they actually have feedback on that page. So if I click on it, I can send them feedback about that specific page and they can address it right on that page. I kind of wish that, um, Unreal did that as well, because this is, it's kind of unfortunate. Um, oh, well, we'll have to move on. Um, you know, maybe if one of their devs are, you know, watching this or something like that, they can maybe take my suggestion, but I kind of doubt it. <laughs> Who knows? Um, or if, you know, if someone happens to watch these videos and, you know, they're, they know someone in the Unreal company or something like that, maybe... <laughs> Maybe hand them this video, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we move on. So, depending on the rotation of your directional light actor, the sky color will change. If you rotate the viewport around, you will see that the sun now aligns with the directional light actor. Uh, this is a, a real-time process, so you can rotate the directional light actor. Press E to switch to rotation mode and the sky will change color from night to sunrise, daytime, and sunset. Okay. Uh, I don't really want to deal with that per se, but, you know, I guess if, if you really want to, I guess you could, you know, do, do a rotation and... 
and whatnot, although I'm not really changing anything right at this moment in time, so I'm not quite sure um, what's going on there. I eat. But I mean, we're we're supposed to be in the rotation mode, in in R. Or wait, now press E to switch to rotation mode. Ah, oh, okay, there it is. Um, kind of difficult to rotate it when your when your mouse is kind of off the screen a little bit, but um, it's not really wanting to rotate very much, or it's giving me a little bit of difficulty with the rotation. <laughs> back to its original position for the most part. So, okay. Um, next, we will change the material on one of your placed static mesh actors by first selecting it. With your actor selected in the details panel under materials, click the drop down box under element zero. Okay, so, um, so now we're gonna be selecting Static mesh actor under materials. Wait, what? I mean, I get what they're trying to say, but, or in some ways, but um, in the details panel. Or wait. Oh, with your actor selected. Never mind. Uh, change it. So I have to select a particular actor. So, um, I guess we'll just use our one cube. I guess. Okay. Uh, with your actor selected in the details panel under materials, click the drop down box under element zero. So, um, so materials, and we're clicking the drop down under. Okay. In the pop-up window, select M brick clay new material. M brick clay new. Um, well, this is a little difficult because now my light source isn't really giving me a good. <laughs> Uh, a good view right at this moment in time. Uh, yeah, let me let me move my point light here down a little bit so I can kind of see the full on that side, and then maybe we'll get our directional light source to rotate. Um, There we go. So now we can kind of see the texture, you know, not only from the inside, but from the outside as well. So, okay.
you you're you're fine with that, right? Okay. Um obviously that's you know that's very helpful when you want to, you know, change your textures and so on and so forth. So um so yeah. All actors in your level have many properties for you to adjust inside the details panel, explore changing their settings. I mean, it'd be nice if you guys could maybe go through each one of the settings because I would love to learn each one of the settings, but this is a quick start. So they're basically saying, hey, play around with it. Okay, but you know, I would, I would love I would love a little more detailed explanation of what each one of the settings is and going through them. So, What do, you, what do you mean the the you mean the box brush? Hmm. Okay, well, I'm not even seeing on their box brush. I'm not really even seeing a uh, um, I don't see a materials topic like it would, you know. Hmm. I'm kind of wondering about this because it's like, you know, um, Well, obviously subtractive, you know, that, 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 you know, you don't really need to worry about a, a texture when it comes to subtractive because it's, you know, it removes it. But if it's an additive, like the, you know, the floor is, then you would think that it would have a material to it, but I'm not seeing it anywhere. Wait, how how are you adding the texture to it? Uh, let me let me see. Well, okay, be careful. Uh, on the normal box, do you mean the cube? That, yeah, uh, the 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 cube under basic, you know, which is kind of what we were kind of like in. Right, um, which is the with 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 the geometry, right? That's interesting because I'm not seeing the, um, well, right. Well, I mean, okay. So, 
hold, hold on, time out, time, time out, time out, time out. So under the cube, I can definitely see materials as its main, as its own like topic, much like the atmosphere and uh, for the, for the sunlight, for the directional sunlight, right? So I, I clearly see materials under the cube, okay? And that, you know, you can do the drop down to change the texture on that, okay? When I go to the box brush, which was the um, original um, floor that they gave us for this particular level, okay? I, Right, I don't see a part in, you know, I don't see a, um, like a full topic of the, you know, of, of materials and the box brush itself. So where are you finding the attribute to add a texture to, where is it? I don't see I don't see that under transform. I see brush settings under transform, but I do not see um, That's weird. Because I didn't add this box brush in before either. This is this is this is something that was kind of added in or you know the that was so but Okay, uh, go back to the one that uh, you were modifying the settings for. Or, you know, that, that had the surface. Uh, what is its type on the right-hand side? Brush type, okay. Hmm, weird. So you Okay, we, we're going to have to figure it out because I don't see it at all, even, even under... We're going to have to... Yeah, no, it's not coming up for me at all, so... Now it shows up. That's we Okay, so... Okay. This is this is probably what the the reasoning is for this. So okay, you you have the box. So if you select if you s select it from the w world outlier, it's trying to focus on you know just the uh, the overall box brush. You know, moving it, changing it from like additive, subtractive, so on and so forth, right? If if you deselect it and select on the 
on you know if you click on it like you said now it shows the surface materials but it's only showing the surface material for that specific surface okay so for example if you were to say like here i'm gonna I'm going to click on one wall of, like, I, I created a new wall, right? Um, here, let me, let me kind of change this. Right. So this is, this is clearly just for the, for the brush, uh, brush box. Okay. So if you're, if you're looking at my stream right at this moment in time, okay, I clearly changed one part of the box surface or box brush surface by clicking on it. Okay, I changed uh, the material type to M brick hewn stone. And then if I click on the other surface, which it has none, I can change it to a different one altogether. So, so like 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 so so now i have two different surfaces right at this moment in time with two different textures on the box brush so so this is interesting it's you know a little different than what you were and than what we're kind of expecting so but the cubes are cubes are allowing for like all the surfaces to be changed um, but it doesn't allow for any kind of additive and subtractive. So it's basically along the lines of you'd probably want to use that for, say, um, like really like surface areas that you don't really want to have any kind of uh, removal from. Or you, maybe you don't really want to um, have any like major changes to it. Whereas the box brush is something that is geometry, something that is something that can change or can be adaptive or whatnot. So, um, so like you'd you'd use a cube for something like a building that is just there, you know, a building that will never move, will no, never change. You'd slap on a texture on it and you're like yep there's nothing you can do to it you know you can't even destroy it or anything along those, along those lines but maybe the box brush is more something for um something that can be changed like if someone shoots a wall for example you want that texture to suddenly change at that particular location right or maybe you want to add a particular texture to that one particular spot for like a bullet hole or something. So maybe that geometry kind of adds that um, potential in. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm just speculating, but you know I'm I'm just you know I'm I'm not 100% sure, so I'm just kind of thinking out loud right at this moment in time. So. Oh okay. yeah. Um, so I fear we're we're pretty much done with the with that the editing placed actors. So um, interesting that you know uh, you have you know the different actors have well I mean I'm, obviously you know each actor has their own different. Um, attributes to them you know much like the um directional light for example you know it has had that atmospheric uh sunlight so but yeah okay uh by now you've no uh, okay shall we move on or do you want to kind of call it at, at this point because we're we're kind of running out of time right at this moment time right at this moment and uh this next step is going to be it seems fairly long do, do you want to call it now or do you want to finish off step six
It's about, um, I guess, you know, build options, lighting, and so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, it seems like this one is like, hey, you've you've put you've put everything in, you've put all the textures and stuff like that. Now you need to kind of make it playable. It is kind of the uh, impression that I'm getting from the running the build process. So it's basically taking everything in and building it in such a way where you can now uh, like put a put an AI into it and have it like interact with everything that's in there. So that's what I'm that's what I'm figuring. So that's what the build process is all about. But that's obviously that that can potentially be quite a bit. So um Okay, shall we shall we kind of call it here and we'll uh, continue this. Um, we'll continue this tomorrow. Okay. Um, you know, it's it's slow going, but I mean, we're we're seeing. We're seeing and experiencing different parts of the of the tools. So I mean, it it you know it will kind of allow for us to uh, learn more. Now, obviously, we've already seen that their tutorials aren't necessarily matching exactly with their uh, with their tool. You know, case in point, the atmospheric sunlight. Um, but you know. Um, it still gives us a little bit to kind of work with or, you know, try to try to figure figure it out. Are we going to be able to, you know, use this per se in a, like a 2D building a game in 2D and stuff like that? Who knows? Probably. Um, because right now it's, it's still feeling very much 3D. Um, so trying to build a 2D environment with what they're giving us uh, I don't know. Uh, it might be a little difficult, but we'll see. So, um, yeah, I, I, I kind of want to try to keep with a like a two D game for right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, even though technically, I mean, if they're giving us all the tools to make a 3D, we could try to do that. But again, we don't necessarily have the artists um, and the uh, the tools to build like 3D assets on our own. So, yeah, so. And I don't know if, I, I don't, know if unreal can allow for us to actually build like 3d assets like a like a person for example unless we would unless we use unless we do something like a very like blocky you know minecraft ish <laughs> character or something like that and uh, then you know maybe but um but again, I, I'd be I'd be very, you know, if you know, once we get to the point of trying to figure out what we want to do in terms of game game and game design, then we'll have to really tackle what we want to do at that point. But we're not there yet, so. But okay. Right. What do you mean? What, uh,
Okay. I, I see what you're kind of going with on this, because if the, if the texture alignment doesn't really match up, then... Well, I mean, okay, so if you've seen in, in other games, the texture, if, you, if you're if trying to put, like, one texture on one part of the wall and another, and the same kind of texture on another wall, and it doesn't necessarily line up, then you see the, the crease, the line. And I, I, I get you on that one. Um, so... Um, it makes you think that, well, why not, why not just, you know, uh, make the entire surface of the cube or, you know, just build like an entire building out of one like major cube and just have the entire surface, um, as, as that cube. But as we've already determined, we can't necessarily cut a doorway out of it. Right. Um, unless of course we we like try to paint something on it and basically kind of do some really funky um and i mean unless unless we do some really uh interesting magic to kind of like show like um like we create a door on one side of the wall create the door on the other side or something or like uh, inside the cube kind of thing and, or you know whatnot and then we have like cameras kind of pointing out and, and in and stuff like that and and you know you can try doing it that way it's like mm, that's gonna be interesting you know you, we could try to do some magic along those lines but yeah it's it's gonna be that would be a little rough to do um, obviously the the, uh, the box is probably our best when it comes to creating um a full-on wall and to be honest we might not we might need to do that anyway like we do uh three cubes for you know the walls that don't have doors on them or something like that um and the other one as you know the other building wall as a full-on box brush and then we can put on all the windows and and all that. But it's feeling to it's feeling to me like the box brush is the best one to use if we're gonna be having if we're gonna be needing to have something that allows for like light and stuff like that to kind of go in and out of players to kind of go in and out of and so on and so forth. Um, the box brush would be you know anything with the brush. You know, box, cone, cylinder, curved stair, linear stair, spiral stair, sphere, whatever. You know, uh, that's probably going to be our best tools when it comes to allowing for anything that, you know, um, has any kind of character interactions with in some fashion or another. You know, allowing for windows, allowing for doors. Um, whereas cubes are just going to be there to kind of be like stationary non-movable you know um just something that's just like going to be like yep this is this is it this is all you're going to be seeing kind of thing um but yeah and you know we can we can work with that if if necessary so but or we can we can try to f we can try to figure out what we want to do with that but for right now we'll leave it at that uh, you gotta you gotta get out of here and get yourself something to eat before we do uh phasmophobia my friend let's go ahead and call it and um you know i'll see you in an, in an hour for some phasmophobia you know so you can get yourself some uh uh, get, you know, b yeah, and, and build up your nerves, you know, stre strengthen your core for the eventual jump scares and s scary atmosphere of phasmophobia. Um, and we'll continue the Unreal session tomorrow. So, um, so yeah, more to come. But I'll catch you later, my friend. You have yourself a good night. Or you see you in an hour. All right, bye. Okay. 
And that's going to be it on this session of the Unreal Engine. Hopefully you guys had a good time with this. Um, hopefully you were able to get, you know, some decent information out of all that and, and the like. So, um, so, um, it, we, we encountered some interesting, ta you know, interesting parts of the Unreal Engine. So this is going to be, um, it'll be interesting for us to try to work with the, you know, potential limitations on it, you know, um, you know, I see what, what Blackheart's concerns about the, the balls and, and the like were all about, but, you know, like I said, if we were like doing like a, an, a building, right? Um, we could just try to make a texture um, for that building, you know, for that single building face, you know, that the character will only see, you know, the one single side of the face. We could just kind of design that texture for it and leave it at that, you know, uh, although there's there becomes a little bit of a problem if we have the um if we potentially have the character able to see uh, like on both sides like there's an alleyway on both sides because the cube if we do like a single texture on like a solid cube then that means that they could potentially see um, like all sides having the same kind of here's all the windows, here's the door, you know, kind of thing. And um, I could see them uh, see people getting a little rooted out about that. So, um, so yeah, it's gonna be interesting to to kind of work with what we have on that. Um, you know, uh, it might be that we might, may need to just have like the, um, you know, if we're building, uh, we, we might need to have, if we're making like buildings, like skyscrapers or something like that, like we're trying to design New York, and we're allowing for, you know, alleyways, right? With, you know, maybe, you know, maybe still some doors on on the bottom floor right there. But obviously the the doors aren't necessarily going to be looking the same like it would and at you know out front on the sidewalk, right? Um, you know, we may need to do like one solid cube to kind of show like, hey, you know, this is um this is an impossible object we don't want people getting you know stuck in there or something like that um and then what we could do is maybe put like another cube as as each of the faces with their own different textures to that but we got to be careful with that because if there's anything that shows like the edges of the of the cube like if we have if we have any any kind of width to the cube then they're going to be seeing that same texture on the sides as well so so you know obviously we got we got to figure some things out about that but we'll see uh, but that's it that's where we're going to go and end this video so uh, i want to thank you all for joining us on this unreal uh tutorial session uh, hopefully you had a great time. Uh, help us out with the um, YouTube algorithm. Checking out, uh, check out Blackheart's um, channel and his videos, his playlists, and the like. Go show him some love. Um, help me out with the YouTube algorithm as well. That'd be fantastic. 
uh, check out the description for links to help me out directly if you want um social media discord um patreon throne and of course my stream team if you want to check that that out um but yeah that's where we're going to go and end it for today so thank you very much for watching i appreciate it hopefully I'll catch you next time but until then take care have a good night stay healthy stay safe and i'll catch you strangers next time